Welcome to ASOR's Tutorials for Cultural Heritage Survey. This tutorial will focus on editing data within a COBOL toolbox project. So now that you have learned how to collect data, either using the COBOL Collect app or on a web browser through COBOL Toolbox, let's return to your dashboard and click on your sample project. And what we find upon entering the project is that the data tab used to be grayed out, but now is active. When we click on the data tab, we now see the two entries that we recorded, both with the app and on the website. The data is sorted in a table form, and as you can see, each column relates to one of the questions that you created in your form. That's in addition to some underlying information that is useful, such as when the record was started, when it was ended, so you have the time and the date. You also have a unique ID number um, and the name of the person who was submitted by. So these are all very useful um, types of information that you might need later on if you're trying to track down who recorded what information, especially if you have multiple people contributing to the same project. Now, if we look to the side navigation, we see that there's five options for sections within this data tab. So currently we're on the table. We also have reports, which provide graphical representations of all of the questions that have been filled out. So since I only really filled out the first three or four, it's only showing results for the first three or four. But if you have a large data set, these could become very useful. The gallery will show all of the images that you've taken and video as well. Now we don't have any images here, but if we go to another sample project that I've created, which highlights all the UNESCO inscribed World Heritage Sites in Tunisia, we'll go back to data and I've added a couple of sample images from Wikipedia. So here we can see all the images and you can quickly download them. We have the download section, which I will get into a little bit more in the next tutorial on exporting your data and moving it into a QGIS project. But for right now, just know that you can download either XLS, CSV file, or even media attachments. So the media attachments would be any photos or audio or video uh, media that you've collected. So we'll get into this again on the next tutorial. And finally, we have the map. So this map only displays those points taken by the location, the automatic geolocator. If I had any points where I entered the longitude or latitude manually, they would not show up on this map. So let's return to the table and I'll show you a couple of features. First, you have these two icons where you can open the record and view it, or you can edit the record. So if we click on the open, we just get a quick overview of all of the answers for that specific record. You can move from one to the next up here. You can also duplicate records if you think that's necessary. And there is the possibility to validate any of the records. So let's say you have multiple people collecting information and you have one manager who's gonna go through all the data, clean it up and approve it. If you're going through your data and you notice that there's any errors or mistakes in the data collected, you can edit any of these entries by selecting the edit icon right here. And you actually notice this looks the exact same as the form, um, the online form for collecting data. So just go to the question that you'd like to change the answer. Let's say we want to change the site name to site three. We just change it here, resubmit, and now we see that the record has been updated. There is also the possibility of bulk editing records. Let's say that one of the question types, you wanna change the same answer for all of the entries or for multiple entries. You could select all, or you could select both of them together. And once you do that, this edit button and delete button will appear up here. So one, what's nice is that Kobo tells you how many you've selected, how many records, just to be sure. And you could delete these if that's what you wanted to do, or you select edit. And you have this new pop-up where let's say that we know all the types are the same. So we know that 
One of the responses was building and one was monument for our two records. But let's say we know that they're all monuments, we can just select this. And then once this is selected as the site type, we press save and we confirm and close. And now when we go back, we see that the site type has all been changed to monument. Thanks for watching this video. As a reminder, you can access all of ASOR's tutorials for Cultural Heritage Survey using the URL located here at the top of the page. Hope to see you again. Goodbye.